Hello everyone, it's Wilson here. Today I want to talk about finding the antiderivative for the arc sine function or the sine inverse function. And how do we do that? We are going to do integration by parts. Okay, so um, the way that we are doing integration by parts is that we are going to set up a, a table or which we call the tablet method of integra uh, integration by parts. And we also call it the row integration by parts because it's done by using the rows. Okay, so how do we do it here? We are going to set up a table that looks like this. Um, this is the sign column with the plus or minus signs right here. And then there was a D column right here. This D column is actually, the D stands for differentiation. So we are actually taking derivatives down this column here. And then for the, um, for the I column right here, the I column is the integration column. So we are going to integrate down this column. And then you may say, what about this here? I call this the note column. So this, um, this is just a note column for you to keep track of what the integral looks like when you start doing in integration by parts. And so um, in this column, it's actually um, what we are getting is that the current integral that we have for the minus or uh, for uh, the opposite of the integral of edu. So when you see that integral, if you realize that you can actually um, integrate that function directly, then you can stop with the integration by parts, and then you can just focus on integrating this function. Okay, so let's get started, and then I will show you what's going on. So we are going to start by writing the plus sign right here. Okay, the reason for why we are putting the plus sign right here, because there is no minus sign, and then um, the signs will be alternating when we are moving down this column. It's really because of the minus sign in the integration by parts formula. and just for you to recall, um, just for you to see the formula, I, I should just write it down right here for the integration by parts formula. It's that when we integrate um, the U, right? When we integrate the U, I actually should use a different color here. Um, so let me just use integral, okay? Integral of U, right? So the U is actually um, the one that we choose to put in the um, this spot the first entry of the D column. And that's actually our U. So I'm going to put the U right here. And then there was the DV, right? So there is the DV. DV is actually the I column in there. So we got to integrate that column to the DV. And that's equal to what? That's equal to, okay, UV. So the U is this one. And then there was the V. Right? We integrate the DV. So we get the V and then minus. Okay, the minus sign is really just coming from here. So that's why I use the blue color because that's what happens when um, when we do the minus sign, it's going to cause the sign to alternate. Okay, there was the integral, the so integral symbol, integral of V du. So the V is going to be this one. And then there was the du, the du is what? The du is actually the derivative of the u. So I'm just going to use that same color here. Okay. So now, um, what we're gonna do is that we gotta choose our u to put here, and there is only um, there is only this function, and we know its derivative, but we don't know its antiderivative because that's what we are trying to find here. So what is u? U is going to be sine inverse of x. Okay, sine inverse of x. Now, what about the the dv column, the i column, the i column? It's going to be what? It's going to be um, just the dx right here. So I'm just going to put a one right here. Okay, because the, we don't really have anything else, right? There should be a d, dx involved in here, but we actually are omitting that. So don't worry about it. So just leave it like this. Is that okay? Okay, now, um, if you're putting all this on this side, right? If you're putting all this on this side, do you see what's going on here? If you uh, pretend that that plus is a positive one, one times sine inverse of x times one together, we are getting the integral of sine inverse of x dx. See what's going on here? That's exactly the original integral, right? So once you set up everything in this column, it will be a good idea to put multiply everything together and then put it inside an integral and see if we are actually getting the original integral. If we're not getting the original integral, then what do we need to do? We need to make sure that that um, we that's the original integral. So we gotta um, something's wrong, right? If it's not 
the same as the original problem. Okay, so now what do we do? We are going to start moving down the columns right now. So for this column right here, we have a minus sign, right? And then the D, the D is what? The D is going to be taking the derivative of that. It's going to be one over, one over, okay, the square root of one minus x squared. Okay, the square root of one minus x squared. That's the derivative of the arc sine function. Okay, now next, um, we integrate the dx or the one, so we are getting just dx right here. Okay, so it's that simple. And then now let's actually multiply all this together and see if we are getting an integral that will allow us to integrate. Um, so what do we get here? We are going to be getting a minus sign, right? So include this minus one, pretend that uh, it's negative one. So minus sign, integral, right? And then now put the x and the one over square root of one minus x squared together. Then we are actually getting x over, okay? one minus x square and then dx you see what's going on here this looks like a simple problem here um, that can be done by u sub right so we can actually just do a u sub on this to find the antiderivative for this x over the square root of one minus x square so that means if you can integrate right you can stop here don't continue down the columns. There was no point to continue. So that's why this no column is useful because um, it helps us to, uh, to to determine when we can stop with the integration by parts. So we, can, we shouldn't be blindly just going down the columns without checking this column right here. Okay, so now what do we do? So what we do is that we will now focus on um, integrating this function, right? So let's do that first. Um, actually, we can start writing down everything and then we can do a use up on this one. It's up to you how you want to do it. You can break it into pieces and then start doing the problem or you can, it doesn't really matter. Okay, so um, let's just focus on doing this first. So right now we have this integral, okay? So we have this integral. So I'm just going to put it down right here, negative integral of x over, The square root of one minus x square. And then there was a dx here. Now let's perform a u substitution right here. Now, um, because we're already using the uv here, even though we actually didn't explicitly using it here, but um, just to uh, avoid the variable conflicts, we are not going to be using the u for the u sub. We are going to use, let's say, w because my name is Wilson, right? So w stands for Wilson. So let's just use w. Okay. So what do we do here? We are going to um, let we are going to let um, let me see. So let w be one minus x square. Okay. So dw. It's going to be negative 2x dx. Okay, so now we do have the x here, we do have the dx here, but we don't have the negative two, right? Well, actually we do have the minus sign. So all we need to do is to get the two to the other side so that we have negative x and then the dx. Okay, so one over two dw is equal to negative x dx. And that's all that stuff that we have here. And that all that stuff together can be replaced by one half dw. So let's continue with the problem. So we have the integral, okay? So the negative, the x, the dx, all together, it's one half dw. So we put that there, one half dw. Okay, so far so good. And then, What do we have in the denominator? We are actually getting um, the square root, right? What do we get at the bottom? What do we get inside the square root? We are going to be replacing the one minus x squared by the w. So we are gonna put a w here. Okay, so that's nice. 
right? Let's clean up this expression. So if we clean it up, then we are actually getting the integral to be um, one half, right? And then we also need to write it in the power form. So we are having w to the negative one over two. Okay, and then there was the dw. Okay, so let's integrate this. Let's integrate this. What do we get here when we integrate? We are going to be getting the one half, just put it there. And then we are going to be getting w to the um, one over two, right? Because you're adding one when you're reversing the power rule. And then you're gonna multiply by two. And that's actually pretty nice because we can cancel the one half and the two, right? So let's do that. And then what is w? w is actually 1 minus x squared, right? So 1 minus x squared, so we can replace that. That is actually just 1 minus x squared to the 1 half. And then plus the constant of integration, right? So just put a plus c right here. Okay, so that's this integral here. That's actually our minus integral of vdu but we still need to put the uv together, right? So how do we put the uv together? Remember, this is u, that's v. And so when you are actually writing down the answer, right? When you're actually writing down the answer, let me just put down the original integral here. So the sine inverse of x dx is equal to, now how do we write down the answer? We start multiplying this entry and that entry in the table, and then go down this way. Okay, so follow the arrows and multiply them together. This is the u and the v. So we are going to be getting plus one, so we don't need to worry about it. And then we get the x and then the sine inverse of x. So x and then sine inverse of x. Okay, and then what do we have here? Copy this one, right? So plus. Um, I can turn it back into a square root, so we are getting... Well, oh, actually, yeah, plus the square root of 1 minus x squared, okay? And then plus the, and, uh, the constant. So see that that's actually quite simple to do, right? Um, <clears throat> The, it's the whole process for the integration by parts is actually really short. And this table can be constructed within 30 seconds, but I because I was explaining and talking a lot, so that's why you see that the video is long, but the whole process shouldn't take longer than five minutes. Okay, so that's it for our antiderivative here. That's pretty simple. And then, so um, if you like this video, please give me a like, subscribe to my channel, and share my videos to others. It will really give me a lot of support to make more videos if you um, subscribe to my channel and then share my videos to others. Thank you so much, right? Okay, so I also would um, would ask you to uh, just leave me a comment so that uh, if there are, let's say there are problems that you want to see me doing or there are types of problems that you want to see me doing, it will be great, right? Just leave me some ideas, then I will try to make videos of those ideas. Thank you. I will see you next time.